are at Quilt Market in Houston and we're on the Block Block stand for whom we distribute in Australia. And this is Jana Thomas. Good morning, Jana. And Jana's going to take you through this beautiful pineapple quilt method using Block Block tools. Over to you. <laughs> Okay, what I have here is a pineapple quilt that I made and the reason I'd like to share with you the benefits of Block Lock is because you get the look of paper piecing without the paper, you get spectacular matching because everything is controlled, you can make your block size any size you wish, you can start with any size block you'd like, you can even start with a triangle if you'd like and it just turns out so well and on top of all that you can insert any size strip as long as you've got the ruler for it. So let me show you how to build a pineapple. Sounds great. Off we go. Our starting round one is basically a square and a square. So you want to have on hand your strips that have been cut a little wider, at least an eighth of an inch, so you have something to trim. And remember, it's the trimming that gives you the look of paper piecing and that great matching. So I chose a two and a half inch square and I have surrounded it with oversized strips. The first thing you'll do is take the ruler and I'm going to cut from this side of the groove here because that will give me one inch finished. I don't want to use this side because if I do, I'm going to end up with half an inch finished from seam to seam. So you get a twofer here with these rulers, um, double the fun like spearmint gum I guess. So uh, you're always pressing away from the center. You're going to lock on and trim all four strips just like that. After you've trimmed it, then you have to trim off the corners because we want it to look like this. So you've got two choices here. You can line up and I hope you can see this printed right angle here. If you put that right on the corner, you can trim off all four corners. The other thing that you can use is our Block Lock Flying Geese rulers because they are perfect for that. You'll never lose your tip there. So once you've got it trimmed, this would be the end of round one. And the next thing is to add red strips for round two. And notice that it's not all the way out to these. You don't need it. You just need it to be a little bit um, beyond there. And at every round, you're going to do two things. You're going to trim the current round, trim all four strips. Then you're also going to lock onto the previous round, which is the cream. So once you've locked on and you trim that off, then the next round I would be able to add a cream strip there. So at every round, just remember, this is so easy, you lock on and trim the first round, you lock on and to the previous round and trim that off, and then you keep going until you have an equal lump number of cream and red strips. To finish this off, this is so easy, you probably won't believe it. You're going to take a ruler and we need to measure from the cut corner to the cut corner and this is approximately six and a half to seven inches. So when I cut a square that size and then I cut them in half, you'll Fold your block in half to get the center. You'll fold this in half to get the center. Then you'll match the center marks and stitch. And when you add all four, now let me turn this to where it looks like a square from your point of view. When you sew this on now, this will be oversized and then all you have to do is square it up easy. 
It certainly is, Janet. That's excellent. And red and white's always a firm favourite with quilters. Yes. And it just looks amazing. So thank you very much. Thanks. Another wonderful block block tool. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.